Matt now works in one of the most beautiful places in the world. He's head chef at the Inverlochy Castle Hotel, which is four miles from Fort William, in the shadow of Ben Nevis. This is one very posh hotel indeed, frequently voted one of the best in Europe. A room here will set you back, well, loads. But Matt didn't come here for the decor or the scenery. I came here for the type of food that was being served. Uh, even when I started in Milwaukee, I had a Michelin star, I had three years at, so now I wanted to come work in that environment and another chef and, you know, learn more. In complete contrast to Tom, Matt did all his training in Scotland and his hallmark is Scottish produce cooked with imagination and great care. He came to this hotel 13 years ago and was made head chef in 2000, winning his own Michelin star a year later. He runs his kitchen quietly but firmly and insists on approving each tray before it leaves the kitchen. Every dish has to be looked at, you know, just to check it's everything. It's amazing how people can forget to put a piece of garnish on or something, and they should know by now what I want from them. They've seen the dishes before, so um, I'll send it back when it's wrong. Matt doesn't need to shout. The staff know exactly where they are because his philosophy is very clear. The style of food in our kitchen is modern British. Obviously, you know, a lot of classic um, influences, but we use a lot of local produce, local shellfish, local seafood. Obviously, in the seasons, the, the local venison and game. Above all, Matt loves cooking. It's what motivates him. You wouldn't be in this industry and you wouldn't work there as that we do if it wasn't funny, you didn't enjoy it. Obviously, some nights are uh, worse than others, but you still turn up the next morning to do the job, so, yeah, it's fun. Of course it's fun. Matt's clientele is completely different to Tom's, but they both have very satisfied customers. It'll be interesting to see which style the judges think meets the Great British Menu Challenge. Which menu is most likely to impress the guests at the Gherkin? So let's find out what sort of revolutionary starters they're creating. I've come up with this dish. I'm going to reinvent the, the British breakfast using this wild boar and quail eggs and mushrooms and tomatoes and all the different components of the British breakfast. But can you really serve breakfast as a starter at a banquet in June? I'd have thought it was much too heavy, but what do I know? It's very complicated too. The boar's head will end up as a little sausage, accompanied by haricot beans, a quail's egg, grilled tomatoes, stuffed mushrooms, and topped with crispy pig's ears and pancetta. So it has all the traditional ingredients of a British breakfast, but in a very different form. It's maybe a bit of a cheeky dish, I'm not sure. Um, maybe uh, I'm being a bit too imaginative, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going for it. Well, it's certainly imaginative, but is it really new and cutting edge? I'm not sure. Let's see what Matt's come up with. Well, I'm going with a British classic as well, sort of thing, but I'm going with the, the beef and horseradish root. So I've got a nice um, shoulder beef here. Uh -huh. So we're going to marinate it in red wine. I'm going to breeze that down slowly. I'm going to make a horseradish ice cream. Horseradish ice cream? So some fresh horseradish. So he's taken the traditional Sunday lunch idea of beef and horseradish and stood it on its head. But horseradish ice cream? He's totally changed the way the flavours work together. The emphasis on that dish to make it more than is a horseradish ice cream with braised beef. And it, it's, you know, it's a wee bit different. It's not overcomplicated, but it's, you know, it's a wee bit different.